Okay, people. So, I'm in War Room 1. It's December 11th, 2019. I have to get up in here, people. Hold on a minute. I have to get a flashlight. Okay, so I have not been in here for a very, 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 very long time, people. Just too busy. You can see how dusty it is. So, of course, I'm going to want to dust this. It's going to take two days, one to two days. Do you see? That's how long. This stuff in here will be okay. It's stuff I never get to use, people. All right, always fighting corporations. My life has been ruined. Like, literally, my life has been ruined. In so many ways, it's been ruined. Anyway, what? You see that dressmaking form? It's been sitting there for probably 10 years. Probably. For as long as everything else has been sitting here for. And it's all science books in there, people. That's all science. Do you see? So actually, it would be nice if I could get in here and maybe start going through some of these books with Andre. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to take take that dressmaking form off and then because these are square for the most part you can see they'll stack nicely right there and take this out and then we'll see what else is in there hold on see I can't really get into this stuff this stuff was all up in here right here's my petition so I gotta get into here and type it out but I'm kind of, you know, seriously, if this thing was to fall, it would go into the glass. And I don't want it to... In the middle of the night, as I'm sitting here typing my mystery novel, again, part two, right? In terms of when I was in here typing for Uncle John and going through everything and piecing it all together and then realizing that his mail had been illegally transferred without his knowledge or my knowledge in uh, on beginning from February 4th of 2015 right that's when the mail transfer was put in after they after they moved him to the old Yale Road Center for temporary uh, physiotherapy a couple of more weeks as soon as he was moved over that's when they put in the, the illegal mail transfer and then Fraser Health Authority staff stalled for time until one of John's uh, credit card statements got mailed off to his sister's house through that transfer, illegal mail transfer, which is a, a, a federal offense under the Criminal Code of Canada. So, you know, it became like a mystery novel as I was typing it out. Well, there's not a lot of mystery around Shemay other than it's a cover-up, right, with the public union sector in general. But when it comes down to the minutes and the timeline, there is no mystery, people. So anyway, I'm going to get up in here and I'm just going to work on this for now. Look what I just found. I don't know what's down there either. I don't remember people. Something in a bag. So I used to sew, right? Okay, that's Sky when she tries to come in here and have her kittens. Anyway, you can see that's a map. I don't know what else is in here. There's a couple of them. And then it looks like I've got some maps in there, too. And, of course, spider webs, right? So I'm going to just get up on all this. I'm hoping to find a map today. That would be great. I, know I want it of Canada and the United States. I don't know if I have that. Honest to God, I don't remember what's in those bags, people. Oh, look what I found. Oh yeah, 
Isn't that the strangest thing? Well, I guess it's hanging up from up there. Uh, why it would be there, I'll, I'll never know. Hmm? Get it up, horsey! Yeah! Book people. There's another one. Look at that one. Oh my. Do you like the diamonds? No. Let's see what's in this book. Better than children's books now, aren't they? This is a heavy book, people. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, shh, quiet. I'm doing a video. Huh? I'm doing a video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you see this? This is. These guys are on little uh, horsey sticks. You know what I mean? They're all rideable for children. Do you see? That's why that's here. Because that part of my life went on hold, people. Okay. So. I am up here. Looks like I've kind of lost my flashlight though. I need my flashlight, people. I found another book. I'm dusting while I'm here. And I'm putting just a small hook in here for now until I find my bigger hooks. Look at that. Ah. Statue of Liberty. <laughs> but look what's in there. This one right here. ABCs of the human body. Maybe we'll take that one out too. Okay. Remember when we're looking at jars? And sometimes we find things on jars that we're not too sure what happened. And I told you it could be like an oxidization of something left behind that you didn't wipe when you put the jar away or maybe it was a spider leaving what spiders leave behind well here's a similar situation people i just bringing it to your attention right now obviously there's something on there right i could feel it when i'm up in here wiping things down you can see the dust i always wipe the books right i i wipe things right for the dust. So the chances of that being left behind by me is probably slim. This probably has something to do with a spider because, you know, there's spider webs in here, right, people? With dust, and you can see, right? There's a spider web, do you see? I mean, there was lots of them down in there, but I've already wiped it out. I put in, for now, those hooks up there, you can see. Hold on. 
Okay. See? She may would have loved these books, people. <coughs> right? She may was like me. You know? See these jars? Those were my mother's jars. <laughs> so those jars are like, oh my god, probably over 40 years old at least, people. At least 40 years old. At least. Okay, so I got it back up there, as you can see. Double hooked it. I would prefer the bigger hooks, but anyway, got out all the spider webs, took out a few things, added a few things. Wiped everything down up in there, right? Did whatever I did. And wiped everything up in here. So anyway, found another letter here. I'm going to read this one. Okay, this is from 2012. Hold on a minute. Okay. I found Uncle John's magnifying glass in my eyes, people. Like I said, it's going to be rough in here <laughs> over the next little while. Going to use Uncle John's magnifying glass for stamps. All right? Should be working on the stamp collection with Andre. And there's the key for his bedroom, Uncle John's room, aka the playroom for Andre. There's Uncle John's little box. Auntie Shimei and I, we found it a different day. Anyway, you can see it's addressed to me. What's the date on it? June 25th, 2012. This is from Fraser Health Authority. Um, Andre hadn't been um, removed from the home yet. Sierra was uh, evicted from her home December 10th of 2012 and by December 21st of 2012 from being disconnected from her methadone and her place of rev re residence and her safety net basically being homeless out on the streets in the flash of an eye on the whim of a social worker within 10 days Somebody injected Sierra with heroin when Sierra was sleeping. And we know the story from there, people, don't we? I don't know if I can read this. Yeah, I can't read this, people. I have to turn off this light on this camera. Hold on. All right, we'll try this again. So anyway, this was in June. June. This was a letter of response back to me because what happened was my regular family doctor, the one who had told me that my uterus had tilted, which was years and years later, people, after the fact of giving birth to Tisha, right? He ended up, going someplace else and so I didn't have a family doctor right and uh, anyway I needed some stuff done and whatever and this is when Joan was um, around right at the time and uh, she was seeing some doctor and she took John to that doctor too at one point and tried to get John like convinced that he had back cancer. Go back into my videos, you'll hear me talking about John maybe having back cancer because of Joan and her need for medical attention every two fucking weeks. There's always something wrong with that woman. Like clockwork, every two, three weeks, 
she was going back and forth with the uh, ambulance. She'd stay at the hospital for a week or two. They'd release her, bring her home. She'd come home. She'd be here for another two, three weeks, whatever. And then she'd be picking at herself and doing whatever Joan did. And then she'd be gone again. And then she'd be back four days later. And it was just like a revolving door with her. Anyway, she tried to get John on that bandwagon at one point. So she ended up taking John to this doctor. Right? And I needed a doctor because, like I said, my family doctor just moved on. He just left the whole area, and I didn't have a family doctor for anything, right? And I needed some forms filled out and stuff. And So anyway, they were saying, oh, you know, call up this doctor, right? Go see this doctor. And I'm like, yeah, but maybe this doctor won't see me because, you know, he's dealing with elderly people, right? And Long story short, I ended up phoning the office people. I phoned the office and I made sure that he could see anybody and not just specifically the elderly, right? Like, I feel so set up by this doctor, right? And they insisted, that, you know, the receptionist or whoever I was talking to on the phone at the time insisted, yeah, they were taking patients and there was no criteria as to the patients that they were taking because this doctor could still take patients. Because John was saying, go see this doctor. You know, Joan was saying, go see this doctor. And I'm like, because I needed a doctor, right? And so I finally I gave in and I said, okay. Because I didn't really want to because, you know, Joan, right? So anyway, finally I gave in because I couldn't find any doctor, right? That was going to take patients, right? In terms of a family doctor type thing, right? So I booked an appointment because they said that, you know, he, he wouldn't discriminate against who he accepted as patients. There was no age criteria. Okay, so I go with John. I take John with me. And I sit and then we have this conversation with this doctor. Long story short, he refused to accept me as his patient, people. He literally just, nope, <laughs> got rude, walked out of the room. I don't know. I was so upset. I came home and I wrote a letter. Now, I don't know where the letter is. I'm going to find it. But this was the answering letter back from Fraser Health. Okay? Now, this letter was returned, like, written to me on June 25th of 2012, and Sierra was targeted in December of 2012, with Andre being illegally apprehended in January of 2013. Anyway, this is from Fraser Health Authority Patient Care Quality Office. In my travels, when I find the um, letter that I wrote that John would have signed with me, <coughs> I will read that and post this as well in my Google documents. It says, Dear Miss Chorney, thank you for contact contacting us <coughs> about your concerns regarding your visit to the primary health care clinic, <coughs> PHC, <coughs> at the Jim Patterson Outpatient Clinic and Surgical Center on February 3rd of 2012. I sincerely apologize for the delay in responding to you. So clearly I must have wrote it in February, March. I must have wrote it in either in February, soon after I had the encounter with this miserable person, and it took them till June to answer me back. We appreciate feedback from patients such as you. Well, first of all, I wasn't even a patient because he refused me as a patient, people. Because doing so helps us to improve the quality of care that we provide. We are sorry that you had an unpleasant experience. Yeah, because he insulted me, people. He literally sat there and insulted me with Uncle John at the PHC. Your overall concern is that physician did not accept you as a new patient. Because I specifically phoned before I went there, people, making sure that there was no age criteria in light of 
him seeing Joan and John. And based on what Joan and John were saying, they were saying, go to him because he's accepting new patients. So I phoned. They said, yes, there was no age criteria. And I booked an appointment and then he turned me away as he insulted me. Your concerns were reviewed by the manager of the primary health care clinic. She spoke to the physician as well as other staff who were present on the day of your appointment. I have summarized your concerns and our response to them below. You stated that you felt that the physician the you stated that you felt that the phys physician physician discriminated against you once he learned that you were on welfare and that he was only interested in taking patients who can make him money via prescription drugs and tests and etc. And that is true, people. That's exactly fucking true. Because that doctor had John, through the uh, instigation of Joan, jumping through hoops, convinced that he had back cancer. Because Uncle John had bad back, bad legs, right? Joan showed up. Joan going to the doctor all the time, crying this, crying, 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 crying about everything under the sun. And then she got John on that bandwagon, took him to this doctor. Next thing you know, this doctor has got him going for fucking back x-rays and this and looking for back cancer and scaring the hijibis out of John. And I'm like, John, calm down, calm down. <laughs> you need a second opinion here, John. That's why when I wrote the letter, I'm like, he's discriminating. Because he can't run me through a bunch of tests. I didn't go for a bunch of opiates, people. The reason Joan was seeing this doctor is because he was prescribing her fucking opiates. And she was on like 12, 15 different kind of fucking medications. Right? With Oxycontin and Oxycodone and this pill and that pill and sleeping pills and antidepressant pills. And she used to sit in her bed and play with her pills, people. And then she tried to get John to start taking pills. Sometimes I think she doped him up. I, call, I told him, to do. I said, John, you be careful. Anyway. You also felt that he was distracted by the technician and by the phone call that he had to take during your appointment. Yeah, now that I remember, right, I'm having a conversation with this doctor, John, sitting there. I'm trying to explain whatever I'm trying to explain. <clears throat> and he had some um, student technician going in and out of the door, bothering him every fucking two minutes as the phone was ringing and he's talking on the phone. Like, this is a doctor with an intake, right? You stated that you attended the appointment with your stepfather. Stepfather, people, right? Mr. John Bernard Duncan, Mr. Bernard John Duncan, right? A.K.A. Uncle John who is a patient of the physicians only because of Joan. And after this appointment, he had decided to find another doctor. Well, yeah, because John was disgusted with the way that doctor treated me. You don't believe that this doctor should be paid for his visit with you. No, I don't, people. No, I don't. And if, no, shitty doctors shouldn't get paid. Shitty doctors need to be sent back to their shitty fucking countries from where they fucking come from. The review indicated that the purpose of your appointment on February 3rd, 2012 was an intake, a meet and greet between you and the physician as well as you and the clinic. The PHC operate as a team. The physician conducted his session in accordance with the standards of a first appointment. Okay, with the technician going in and out, interrupting this, that, you know, moving things around, doctor get up, deal with it, and then sit down, and then the phone rings, he's talking on the fucking phone, as he's insulting you people. As he's insulting you. 
The physician conducted his session in accordance with the standards of first appointment, meet and greet. He realized that the two of you would not likely be able to form a satisfactory working relationship. For that reason, he declined to accept you as a patient. This is in accordance with the BC standards of PHC standards. Targeted individual people. These doctors are targeting vulnerable families so that they can exploit them with unnecessary tests, scare the pants off them as they do it, overprescribe opiates and other mind alterating drugs so they can build their monster houses and fucking watch the rest of the freaking community be torn apart right in terms of the old bungalows right for progress get torn down right to build in more monster homes so more fucking doctors from other countries can move over here and give us shoddy health care people. And then expect to get paid for it. The review also revealed that you exhibited some behavior that could be described as disrespectful. Okay, disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously the man was insulting, right? Obviously he was being cynical and snide, right? Obviously he was being rude and definitely unattentive, right? Obviously the man was playing games, right? An effective working relationship is the key to goals of the clinic. I went in there distraught, people. Distraught. I was upset. Not only was I dealing with fucking Joan and her crazy shit, right? You know, I was looking after a household full of people, okay? As I was getting up into the yard and I needed some things dealt with and I couldn't find a fucking family doctor. Anywhere I went, I couldn't find a family doctor, people. So, finally... Joan and John said, try this doctor. And simply because I phoned first and I verified that there was no age restrictions or anything on there. I mean, the guy was a fucking dickhead. Let's just face it. <coughs> the one of a long line of many within our healthcare system. In response to your concerns that the physician may prefer other patients who might increase his income. Oh, I can't wait until I find that letter that I wrote Fraser Health Authority back in 2012. How much did they fucking charge for Shimei's dead body to put her on display for nine days? I'd like to know, people. We wish to inform you that the physicians, physicians, more than one, at the PHC work on a contract with Fraser Health and the Ministry of Health. They do not receive funds for prescribing medications or ordering tests. That's not true, people. That is not true. Those tests that they order all goes into the fucking system and comes out of the taxpayer's pocket, okay? One way or another, it comes out of the taxpayer's pocket and it props up the building from where those tests are being uh, ordered from or, or being done from. Physicians in BC are not compensated in that manner. Let me tell you something. The Surrey Memorial Hospital, a.k.a. Fraser Health Authority, probably milked taxpayers of hundred five hundred thousand dollars Anywhere between $100,000 to $500,000 to prop up a dead body for nine fucking days on fake ash machines, okay? Just because they could. And that's not including the $500,000 that was run through under the table with the laundering of money via AKA illegal organ sales. That was facilitated through doctors that don't even come from this country.
Ms. Chorney, I hope that this information addresses your concerns. We are sincerely, we all sincerely hope that you are able to locate a physician. So they turned me away knowing that I needed a physician. And they turned me away anyway, people. Right? Because they couldn't hook me up with a bunch of fucking back this and back that and opiate this and opiate that and blood this and fucking whatever. Whatever. We all, we all, hmm, sincerely hope that you are able to locate a physician with whom you can establish a good working relationship and good communication pathways. If you are not satisfied with this response, <coughs> you may wish to consider contacting the Patient Care Quality Review Board. The review board is independent of the health authority. The review board can... Be well, there is nothing independent when it comes to the public union sector and white-collar criminal activity. Trust me, there is nothing, nothing independent. It's a big city fucking problem. And more than one city has this problem. Blah, 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 blah. I put a little sticky tape there to cover up the signature. If you notice, there is no BC employee ID number. They just like to give you a name. And for all we know, it could be a fake fucking name. We learned that at the uh, old Yale Center with uh, um, Uncle John when uh, Mark Hain went in there and wanting to get the BC ID number of um, uh, Sharon. Sharon Newell, the social worker that uh, basically murdered fucking Uncle John with her bullshit. Oh, well, he needs to have a, uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, uh, end of life plan. We're making an end of life plan for John. Yeah, they sure did make an end of life plan for John. But before they did, and remember this, people, before they did the end of life plan, they made sure his mail was illegally transferred onto the island up in Shawnigan Lake so that they could steal his money. Right? That's exactly what they did. That was facilitated through Fraser Health Authority and their funky fucking social workers.